Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony today, and um, thank you for your determined and capable leadership of the Civil Rights Division. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Coons. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Clark, when, when you testified before this committee and when Attorney General Garland testified before this committee, you both promised to be nonpartisan and impartial. I'm sorry to say that I think neither of you have lived up to that promise. Within weeks of President Biden being sworn in, the Department of Justice dismissed a Civil Rights Division lawsuit it had against Yale University for explicit racial discrimination. Yale has a policy that discriminates against Asians and Americans in admissions. It does so brazenly and openly. And yet, the Department of Justice decided that preventing racial discrimination did not fit within the purview of the Biden DOJ. Now, in your defense, you were not yet there, neither was Merrick Garland. So that was merely the initial political operatives of the Biden administration doing what they believed was consistent with the preferences of the president. But just this week, after you were there, after Merrick Garland was there, the Department of Justice issued a mem memorandum to the FBI instructing them to mobilize against parents across the country, parents of school kids, who have the temerity to show up at school boards and express their opposition to the teaching of critical race theory, a pernicious theory that divides us on racial lines, that tells school children the lie that America is fundamentally racist, that America is irredeemably racist, that all white people are racist. It spreads racial division. Many parents are understandably quite dismayed at schools that are teaching this to their children, sometimes as young as five. And yet the Department of Justice looked at that issue and decided to label the parents objecting to this teaching as domestic terrorists. Did you participate in discussions about the memo before it was issued? Um, Senator, I can't talk about internal deliberations. You can't talk uh, about whether you, you participated in discussions about the memo? No, but what I can tell you is that the Civil Rights Division will play a role going forward. The Attorney General has uh, uh, asked the department to undertake a review, and the division will participate in that review to determine how federal enforcement tools can be used to prosecute uh, crimes. Do, do, um, do you believe parents objecting to the teaching of critical race theory have civil rights in the democratic process? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't follow the question, Senator. You don't understand the question whether parents objecting to critical race theory have civil rights? The, the First Amendment is a core value in our democracy. And, I didn't um, say free speech. I said civil rights. School board meetings are democratic. They are petitioning your local government. Do they have civil rights that the voting rights gives a damn about? Yet they have the right to express their view, to uh, challenge uh, the school boards, to ask And, and is reforms. it beneficial for the attorney general to label them as d domestic terrorists and direct the FBI to target them? The attorney general's memo deals with threats against public servants and says that threats against public servants are not only illegal, they run counter to our nation's core values. Do you believe parents objecting at school boards are domestic terrorists? I don't, Senator. Do you believe Antifa are domestic terrorists? Um, I, I, I don't have a view about Antifa. Or Do you believe the Black Lives Matter protesters who burned shops, who firebombed police cars, who murdered police officers, do you believe they're domestic terrorists? Um, Senator, I believe that we live in a society where people espouse different views, but what we don't want are threats You know, Ms. Clark, it is amazing that you're not willing to condemn people who are murdering police officers and firebombing cities because your politics aligns with them. But at the same time, when it comes to parents at school boards, you're perfectly comfortable with calling a mom at a PTA meeting a domestic terrorist. Ms. Clark, with all due respect, this demonstrates why the Democrat proposal to take someone with as long a partisan record as you have and to put you in charge of striking down any voting rights law in the country that you disagree with is nothing but a partisan power grab. Let me, let me give another example, because your division has operated in a purely partisan way. Uh, the Department of Justice dismissed the civil rights lawsuits against the state of New York, the state of Pennsylvania, the state of Michigan for those governor's policies that sent COVID-positive 
patients into nursing homes, forces, forced the nursing homes to take those patients, a decision, a political decision that resulted in tens of thousands of deaths. One of those governors, Andrew Cuomo, has now resigned in disgrace, and his staff had admitted they lied under reporting the deaths that policy caused. And yet, your division dismissed the lawsuit against those Democratic governors. How are, are we to see that as anything other than a purely partisan decision? The, the letters that uh, were issued to officials in the uh, matters that you referenced were put together by career officials inside the department. That career officials can't be partisan? This department carries out its work free from political Are, are you testified to this committee that there are no career officials in the Department of Justice who are partisan? Uh, partisanship does not impact the way that we carry out our Except enforcement Except miraculously, work. you dismiss the lawsuits against Democratic governors, even when their policies may have caused the deaths of tens of thousands of people. You also dismissed a lawsuit uh, that was brought against a medical center that had a pattern of discriminating against health care providers that, for conscience reasons, didn't want to implement abortions, even though clear federal law protects their civil rights. Why did you dismiss that civil rights lawsuit in, in contravention of federal law? Um, General Garland has made clear, and uh, I agree, that partisanship has no place in the enforcement Except every decision of you make Justice is partisan. Department. Your actions contradict those statements. Your time has expired. We're going to Senator Hawley, you're recognized for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks again to the witnesses for being here. Mr. Secretary, nice to see you. I didn't get to visit with you last time, so let's, let's start with you. I think my colleagues have established, given what we're seeing on the southern border, the, the massive increase in illegality there, that that's clearly not a priority for your agency. So let's talk about what appears to be, and that is spying on Americans and censoring their speech. You have turned your agency into a censorship machine. Now, you said earlier this year that you disbanded the Disinformation Governance Board, which I thought was totally unconstitutional, but that turns out to be at best misleading. That's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you're doing. Your own quadrennial review, which was just reported in the press, says that disinformation is going to be the new focus at DHS. The quad review says that DHS plans to target, I'm quoting now, inaccurate information domestically on a wide array of subjects, including, quoting, the origins of the COVID-19 pandemic, the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines, racial justice, U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, and the nature of U.S. support from, for Ukraine. This is what you're devoting your agency's resources to. So I guess my first question is, is an American citizen who criticizes COVID mandates now to be treated as a domestic terrorist? Of course not, and I'd like to say three things since uh, you have three inaccuracies in the question you posed to me. Number one, border security is a priority of ours. Number two, the department does not censor speech. And number three, we did not publish a quadrennial review. Does it exist, the quadrennial review? I believe it is uh, being worked on. Well, it, it's been published in the media. Will you make it public? Uh, when it is final, it will be public. Mr. Chairman, uh, without objection, I'd like to enter the, this article called The Truth Cops, published in The Intercept. Uh, here's my question, then. If, if you're not censoring speech and if you're not treating Americans as domestic terrorists, then why is it that you're pressuring big tech to treat American citizens as if they're threats to the homeland? Why are you pressuring them to censor speech? Let me just let me just take let's take a look at some new documents that have come to light that show what your administration is doing, this administration is doing to censor speech. Let's take a look at this email from July 16th, 2021. It's over my shoulder here. Facebook emailing HHS saying, I know our teams met today to better understand the scope of what the White House expects from us on misinformation going forward. Are you familiar with that email? No. Let's try another one. And if I should, how about hold on, hold on, that, 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 hold, on. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to that. But you're not familiar with this. All right, let's try a different one. Here's one from July 20th, 2021. The White House emails Facebook saying, "Any way we can get this pulled down?" 46 seconds later, Facebook responds, "Yep, we're on it." Are you familiar with that email? No. Okay. How about how about this one? July 23rd, 2021. Facebook employee 
writes to HHS, says, thank you for taking the time to meet today. Wanted to make sure you saw the steps we took just this past week to adjust policies and what we are removing with respect to misinformation. Are you familiar with that one? Uh, Senator, we do not instruct. Just, just, yes, just yes or no. Uh, no, because I'm the okay. secretary of DHS. Well, I'm asking you that because it's funny you say that. A federal judge has just found as a finding of fact, Mr. Secretary, that your office, and I'm going to quote now, is supervising the nerve center of federally directed censorship. It's a federal judge in a federal lawsuit 